Today I'm checking out LS Day Pardo Siberiano doing a reaction to his own drum solo. Let's check it out. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today we are going to react to myself, and there's a good reason for that. I've seen a lot of people reacting to my videos. LS Day Siberiano fans, they make sure to leave a comment. Just talk about how much they do like it or how much they do not like what I do, but I still haven't found any video where you can actually see or listen to a deeper analysis of everything that's happening right and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable so for today's video you and i are going to spend a little bit of time reacting to my drum solo for the 2020 drum off okay like so it. with all of that being said you can find the original video right here and now let's go with it Okay, now a lot of people were very rude with me because I started so loud, right? People wanted me to go like... Now, nah, that's boring. <laughs> However, they only gave us three and a half minutes in order to perform the whole solo. So I thought, let's start big. Let's open the door with a chest kick, right? And that is exactly what I did. Now, I played some hits and just threw some single strokes over there, some paradiddles over there. Maybe I do not remember everything, but it was something like this. And that's too good. It. That's the beginning. Hit, hit, hit. Chop, chop, chop. Okay, here we are. Now let's go with the whole solo. Oi! I love how he's breaking this down for us. Okay, so the first three groups are very, very complex groups, but they are there for a reason. I wanted to start with a very hard groove, and I thought of doing some crossovers, okay? They had to be fast, but they had to sound really clean, right? So in the beginning, I thought of doing everything with my double pedal, doing the whole crossover stuff with the same melody that I'm playing, same accent, same everything. So the first idea was something like this. So seamless. You can play that fast as fuck and it's going to sound very nice. That's nice. That was good. That was a good idea. The phrasing was good. The melody was good. Show everything off. was fine. However, I had to make everything a little bit more spicy, a little bit more interesting. So I thought, why not use the hi-hat in order to start building all of these groups? So let me explain how this works. It's very simple. I was going to use the same melody. However, instead of using the left pedal, I was going to use the hi-hat in order to create the whole group. Instead of going like this, I went like this. Now this is the soft stroke, and here comes the accent. So. Okay, and in order to do that, I needed a very powerful hi-hat, so check that out. I was using a double hi-hat. If you want to get more chic out of your hi-hat, all you have to do is place a little cymbal on top of it. So by using that huh. melody, the groove that in the beginning was played with the double pedal turned out to be something like this. That's tasty. I like that a lot. And actually, again, you can play that very fast. What do you think? Wow. By creating the first groove, I realized that I wanted to create a whole drum solo where everything was articulated around that idea, the use of the left foot in order to create both grooves and chops and then I just started to use different variations like the one that you hear on the second group which is nothing but the original group but keeping the hi-hat a little bit more busy just like this
Now, of course, I don't have the auxiliar hat that I used to have back in the day. However, it may sound different, but it is actually the same group. So let's keep going. Got the cowbell. His chops are out of this world. Now let's take a closer look into this linear group, okay? What's really happening in here? Let me tell you one thing. If you play this exact same groove and you remove everything that's happening except the cowbells, of course, you've got two cowbells, the main one right and the auxiliary one left. Let's see what happens. All that you are going to hear is this. Sounds pretty simple to me. And on the second group, you are going to hear this. What's up with Kermit right there? Now, why is that interesting? Because they are linear groups. Yes, they are. But there are four patterns that keep happening all over these groups. I wanted to create something very complex. So I thought, let's use the Latin claves, okay? I wanted to use the four claves. Three, two, rumba, and son. And also two, three, rumba, and son. So what I did was, my right hand is playing the son claves. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, 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 ta. But my left hand is also playing the accent that would turn the song clave into a rumba clave. Ta, 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 ta. And same thing happens with the two, three clave. So I really liked that idea and it was a very big challenge because I wanted to create a group, a very complicated linear group, but keeping those patterns happening. And if you stop and listen to everything carefully, what you listen constantly are all the claves going on. Three, two, two, three, rumba, son. They keep happening with the cowbells and everything else is just there to distract you, okay? Everything else is just there in order for you not to know what's happening but the real thing that's happening is you are witnessing a linear groove but the main melody that keeps happening are the claves okay check this out this dude is wicked smart and also three two hopefully you're learning something from this if you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment, let me know. Now, I love that idea. They were very, very hard to play. Actually, I don't think I can play them as fast as I used to play them because that took a lot of practice, but that was great. And also, there's a little chop in the middle that is a very, very difficult chop to play. Let's take a closer look. That one, that was very, very hard. It goes like this. Now, that's an idea that I took from one chop that I really love that goes like this. So I thought, yeah, let's use that in order to change from the two, three claves to the three, two claves. And it really worked. So let's keep watching. Now, that's the main break of the whole solo, okay? There we he stop makes it look everything, so easy. and this is the beat that I use in order to transition. I like those kind of beats. I call them tension beats, because they create a lot of tension without needing to play a lot of notes, okay? So that way you get a break, and you can, I don't know, fix your cymbals, fix your headphones, change your stick. That's something that really should happen in the middle of every solo, okay? It gives you time to operate, just in case something goes wrong this one as you can see keeps going around the same idea let's use the fucking hi-hat in order to create complex patterns and right here we are using a group of four we start with the bass drum then we play the hi-hat with the left feet and then we play a double stroke with our left hand and our right hand has time to do whatever you want to do good idea it goes like this And now, here comes the hardest part of the whole solo. It doesn't look or sound hard.
the multitasking is what's going to get everybody on this. Okay, so I wanted to use that break in order to build a very complex group. The initial idea was to play a group by using the same break, the same tension group that I have just shown you. However, since it's just a group of four, it sounded too simple, okay? All right. This is a world tournament. I didn't want to go with that. So I created a pattern that was way, way harder than that. And it goes like this. Now, that was the whole pattern that was going to keep happening with all my body, like that was the original ostinato. And now in order to create a couple of groups, all that was left for me to do was to be able to coordinate that pattern all over again while changing the placement on the snare. On the first part of this the group, dude knows I'm playing what the snare he is on the doing, three, man. and on the second part, I'm playing the snare on the two. Check this out. He looks so relaxed. And that's everything that's happening. It's just the same ostinato, but you are changing the placement on the snare. And in the middle, there's just a little lick that goes like this. Everything else is just playing it, which is Sounds actually so very good. hard. Very fucked up, but I really enjoyed it. Let's keep going. You're a monster, dude. There are just linear groups, you know. But I needed something in order to transition. So on the second linear group, I slow down everything and then I change to something a little bit more funky. And here, something very weird happens and I need to explain everything because it's impossible to get all the details just by watching it. Check this out. Now you listen what I said. Say splash. That means so six fast. eight. Okay, we were playing on a regular four four, and suddenly a couple of hertas happened, and I changed to a six eight. Now this is something that it's not hard to do, but it's very very fucking interesting. So let me break it down for you. We have the time on our left leg, right? One two three four. One two three four. And I'm going to use this hertha phrasing in order to translate transition to a 6-8 polyrhythm. Check this out, it's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. Now that was the whole process, right? One, two, three, four. Tita ta tra ta tita ta tra ta tita ta tra ta tra ta tra ta on dos tre on dos tre on dos tre. And you move to a six eight, but your tempo is still the same. I'm counting it with my left foot, but something even harder happens right now, and it's very interesting. Check this out. Now, I don't know if you realized, but when I changed to the cowbell, my left foot started to play a 6-8 clave. Okay, you could hear it on this bell right here, and then if you pay close attention, my left foot joins. So the pattern is this. Why should I give a fuck about that? Because we started on a 4-4, then we moved 
to a 6-8, but it was a poly rhythm. We were still playing the same tempo with our left foot. And then something interesting happened. The left foot started playing a 6-8 clave. So the only thing that was tying us to the 4-4 suddenly disappeared. And we go the fuck away. We go inside that fucking 6-8. But that's not enough. We need something even harder. So what do we do? Well, now that our whole body is playing on a 6-8. He's six, a eight master. 6-8 clave. Six, clave 6-8 six, groove. Now we are going to transition again to a 4-4 inside this poly rhythm. So while you keep the same 6-8 clave with your left foot, you start playing a 4-4 groove with the rest of your body. And it goes like this. On, two, three, on, two, three. He's an entertainer too, man. <laughs> and that what was, was the that? whole idea. I wanted to start with a 4-4 and then move to a 6-8 while keeping the same tempo that I was keeping on the 4-4 with my left foot. But then I wanted to start a full transition to that 6-8. So I started reproducing the 6-8 clave with my left foot. And then when we were finished with that transition and we were fully engaged on that 6-8 action, I wanted to introduce another poly rhythm. But it was not a poly rhythm. That was the original tempo. So 4-4, 6-8, 4-4, 6-8, 6-8, 4-4, 6-8. And then we needed to go back. He's losing so let's me. Let's see how I did it. Playing a six eight here. That was just madness. Okay, the first groove that I'm playing is a classic Spanish I don't even groove. know what to I say I think it's that. called tumbao or something like that. It's usually used in flamenco and bulerias, and it sounds like this. And I thought, let's keep going with this crazy left foot idea, but now let's use it inside a 6-8. Check this out, they are very easy to play whenever they are played slow, but now that I see the video, I was able to play it really fast. So let's see what happens. Doesn't seem too hard. So I thought, yes, fuck it. I'm going to use very fast grooves that require a lot of skill with your left foot in order to play them properly. And I think that's how I ended the whole solo, but let's check it out. Is he the and then you just chop around in order to see the greatest the of all time. So yes, this may have been a very boring reaction, but I have always wanted to explain all that was happening on that solo. And we appreciate I think it. It's not only hard, but also it's very interesting. Noise, chops, and all that shit. But all the linear groups had something. We had the claves, then we had the transitions, the polyrhythms, the use of the hi hat that kept happening again and again on every single fucking beat. And I guarantee you that is very hard. Hard. Try it at home. Fucking try it at home. It's unbelievably hard and also it's very interesting. So there are a lot of interesting concepts that were a very hard challenge for me at that time, but that actually nowadays are still a challenge. So please, again, here's the fucking solo. Watch everything. Pay close attention. And if you can find any kind of group or information or idea that works for you, try to develop.
develop it because I have spent the last two years of my life developing the ideas that I presented on that solo. As always, you've got all my merchandising on this link right here. You can get your sticks, your hats, your shirts, your beanies, your hoodies, whatever the fuck you want. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been an absolute honor being here recording for all of you and I really, really hope to see you all very soon on the next videos, buddies. Stay safe and take care. Cheers. Hopefully you all learned something cool from that. I know I did. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment something below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.